All right, guys, I decided to add this extra video as I watch you guys work um, because I realized I didn't do the best job in the last video telling you what to do with all these uh, pipe cleaners. So um, just some tips and tricks, basically, on how to fix it and how to paint. Um, so on this one, my last video, I used really big pieces of tape, and the kids are having trouble making it smooth and having a really nice, smooth uh, head or just different parts with it. So here's what you need to do. You need to grab your masking tape, and you actually need to rip your masking tape. I know it's already small, but if you rip your masking tape, it's gonna give you the ability to wrap around these pieces without making it real bulky. And the smaller they are, they can't be very small because then they start peeling off. So they need to be long enough. I'm sorry. They need to be long enough to wrap a couple times around it. And then you'll take the next one and you put it. Sorry, let me take the, let me bend the arms back a little just so you can see. You take it and just overlap it and go in a different angle. And you're going to do a few of these at different angles and then it'll make it pretty smooth. So you get a lot smoother look. If you um, use these smaller strips, again, I'm going to take my tape, a good length of my tape, and I'm going to rip it in half so that I can start wrapping. Um, I wrapped my tape all the, and then I did it for the legs too, as I worked, because it helped me, where the tape was sticking out, it helped me bring all those pieces back in, right over the pipe cleaners. And I taped all the way down the whole leg. So even the part that didn't have any pipe cleaners, I taped that too because it's going to allow my tissue paper to stick a little bit better than it would just to the uh, wire. Notice that my tape is going at a slight angle when I put it around. And it might not end, they might have those little extra pieces where you can't lay it flat, but it's no big deal because you just make it flat with the next row on top. And so I taped my whole leg around. So here's one that I finished. I taped all the way across, just everywhere. And um, I did all that. Remember to kind of taper the legs in. And um, so that's that. Now let's talk about the tissue paper. Nothing changed about the tissue paper. Still go ahead and put your glue down and just kind of crumble it. Mine has one layer. I think this will look a lot better if they have two or three layers of tissue paper. So let me get some glue real quick. Please remember that the color of tissue paper doesn't matter because we're going to uh, paint all this anyway. So get a good amount of glue on there and um, get your tissue paper that you crumbled up and just go ahead and it'd be better if your pieces wrap around. When sculpture starts to fall apart a little bit, it's because we have these really weird tangents where we put stuff on the front stuff in the back and we don't wrap anything around so with anything you do um let me see i hope maybe that's better that was too bright anything you do um you want to be able to wrap around it kind of like that because a new piece you put on top of here will secure that in place and the new piece can wrap around the front and then they'll just get um real nice and secure i like one of the things, some kids are putting too much tissue paper and it's getting too thick. So I would encourage you to go ahead and put some glue at the top if you want to. And then help push all that down. You don't want to leave it real bad. Now, this is not going to let me push it down the way I want until this glue is a little bit drier. So I'm just going to basically leave that there and keep working on a different section. And then when the glue, be the glue becomes a little more tacky, I'll come back in and I'll wrinkle it to more of what I want so that I can get the look that I want. So again, you probably need two or three layers of tissue paper, each one slightly more crumbled to get the look that you want. So there's that. I wanted to show you my paint samples that I did for you. We don't have all this paint, but I just thought I should show you in case you decide to go crazy this summer and build all kinds of stuff. So this right here is a golden looking texture. This right here is more bronzy right here hope you can see that this right here is more like a toned down stone in browns here's a copper looking color here you have like a stone type gray 
And then over here, you have like silver, like metallic silver. Um, right here, you have like a toned down stone that's not metallic-y. And then right here is just basic black. And I made this basic black to teach you with. But um, so these are the different finishes that this technique can do. And again, you can do it with any color. These are just the ones that I chose. I want to show you how to mix paint for a second. So the first step to get anything on this side is to paint your thing black. So if your sculpture, your entire sculpture, every every little corner, every little niche, everything gets painted black. If you want it to go with stone, if you want it to go metallic -y, if you want it to go this color like rock, whatever you want, even if you want to go with the copper that's here, you paint it all black. If you want to go with this side and get some of these tones over here, then you would paint it all dark brown, the base. So I went ahead and painted this whole thing just straight black. And I moved my brush at different angles, not just like this, but at different angles so that I can get inside all the little crevices and get my black. Okay? It's going to be really important for you to reshape your brush so you don't mess it up. But you paint your whole thing black. That's the first step. Or your whole thing brown. So we don't have brown. So here is my paint palette. So here's how you make brown. Um, to get a similar brown to the one I got, you get red and yellow and you make orange. So let me stir that up real quick. So I ended up with too much paint, so I moved it a little bit over to the side. But you make yourself a nice orange. Uh, you need slightly more yellow than you do red to make a nice orange. And then you take some black. And I didn't pour the black on here on purpose because black changes color really, really fast. And I didn't want uh, not to have control. So if I don't like my brown, I can just grab a little more black, but I can't take the black back out. So here's a very nice brown. I think I want it slightly darker, but I like this brown for highlighting. So I'm going to take some out and just move it here because that's a really nice brown. So I'm going to grab it a little bit darker, just a little bit of black. Guys, I barely touched it and came in here. Just, just a little bit of black. That's the brown that I wanted. Okay, so that's the brown that I'm going to use to paint anything on this area right here. Oh, wait, I should probably put a little more black in it. But anyway, find the brown you want. There you go. Find the brown you want and uh, you paint a whole area brown. Your next step is your medium tone. So I'm going to make some gray. And this is the brown I chose for highlighting, so I'll show you in a second. But I'm going to make a medium gray. Notice that I have a bunch of white and just a little bit of black. I'm going to move this black out of the way because I don't want to use it all. I want to use just a little bit and get the gray that I want. As you can tell, I'm mixing very little paint and that's really all you need for this project because it's so small that that's all you need. So this is a really light gray. I like it for highlighting, so I'm gonna leave it to the side and I'm gonna add a little, that was a lot of black, but I think it would be okay. Actually need a little more. Okay, so here's a trick to making this technique work. This right here has a bunch of paint on it and I don't want all that paint on my brush. I am actually gonna grab a paper towel so I'm going to grab a paper towel and I am going to open this up, just clean, clean my paint and I am going to grab some paint and I'm going to dab it off on my paper towel so that it's very little paint. And I call it just highlighting, kind of just touching your surface a little bit. And I'm just going to sort of just touch my surface like that. Just very little. Okay. Just barely. And I'm not pressing hard on my brush, very little. Then when that dries, I'm going to grab a clean brush. I'm going to grab my lighter color and dab it off even more where there's very little paint on it. And I'm going to highlight it a little bit more. And that's how I'm going to get my stony texture. The lighter you go, the uh, different look you'll get. I went really light because I want to add silver on top of here to get this look. So if I had silver, which I don't, I could add it right here. Sorry, there's the bell. If you have a little bit of gold or some metallics at home, we don't really have any here at school either. But this is just something that I had at home. If you have it real light with your highlights, you can add these tones on top and the white will help you catch them. And you can have this kind of golden look to it. So it's just about layering. Look at all the different ones. Here it was black with dark gray and that's it. Here it was black, gray, and then white and then silver. Here it was black, gray, and then a medium gray. Here it was brown, I'm sorry, black, brown, and then bronze. Here it was dark brown, medium brown, and then a little bit of whitish brown, and then the gold. 
So um, here it was dark brown, medium brown, and then the highlights of the bronze. So this is just kind of sort of how you overlay them. Um, I hope you have fun and thank you.